think about business like a piece of art. It's not different. We say building a business, but you can also say create a business. It is like creating a piece of art. It's the same creative process. I am your host, Mitch Bowler, and this is the Pencil Kings Podcast. Today's guest is somebody that you might not have thought about hiring before, but I think you definitely should have somebody like this in your life if you are struggling as an artist and you want to make bigger strides towards making art into a real career. So today we've got Jamila Jamunja. Jamila, she has a unique name. Let's start there. Where does your last name come from? What's the origin of that last name? Which nationality? Okay, that? so, wow, that's a long story because I myself was born in Colombia and then um, I was adopted by my parents who are Dutch, um, but I grew up in Germany. But my first name is actually Arabic and my last name um, comes from the goddess of water, Yemanya, and that's like a... a African goddess, but that's also still a uh, revert in um, Brazil today. So she actually has like a, um, a national holiday, I think, uh, somewhere in February, I think 15th. That's where that comes from. Wow. So your name is literally like you, you just told me a story that your name is planted in like two countries and you yourself were born in one country and then were sort of raised in another country. So you're literally a yeah. global citizen. Yeah. Would you say absolutely. that's correct? <laughs> All right. So quick backstory, Jamila and I, we met maybe 18 months ago or so. I thought it was really cool that she was an artist and, um, but I didn't know too much about what exactly she was doing then. So to start off, why don't you give people a really quick introduction about what you do and how you're working with and helping artists? Sure. So um, what I do is I'm a business coach um, specifically for artists. Um, I got started doing this um, by first building websites for artists because I've, I'm an artist myself. And in, I don't know when was this, 2008, I had my first art side up and um, back then I didn't have any money to really hire someone to do my website for me so I started learning all about WordPress and um, plugins and themes and all the stuff that you need to have a WordPress site and um, so I started building my first website and people asked me other artists asked me if I could help them with that and then later I figured out that most people when they have the website and that also happened to me um, you have the website, but that's not really enough. You can't just wait for people to come by your website and buy something. You have to start learning about marketing and SEO and all that other stuff that you need. So that's what I did. And then I started also um, publishing um, blog posts on my site about uh, marketing for artists. And so that's how I got into the whole business side of things. Awesome. And I don't know if you should call yourself a business coach for artists. Now, you probably know better than I do, but I just feel like for artists, when you say the word business and thinking of myself, if I go back to when I was the most, I would say the most purist on my art path when I was probably about 17 years old and drawing, you know, for four or five, six hours a day. If somebody told me business, I was like, <laughs> no, you know, I would... I would take my clothes and unstitch like the Nike logos off them. You know, you, yeah, it's so ridiculous. You know, you buy this expensive sweater and then you take <laughs> off the thing with a little stitch ripper. But, well, basically, I, w I want people just to get into a state where they can think about the possibilities. If somebody could help you, just take what you're doing now, except make maybe, you know, double the money, triple the money, 10 times the money because they put you onto a path that you might not be thinking about because you're focused on your art and they're focused on all the stuff that's important and around it that you actually need that if you ignore this stuff, you're going to be kind of falling on your face. So let's take a step back and tell people a little bit about how you got started. I know you said you were working on the WordPress stuff, but let's talk about how you got started actually working with artists. People were contacting you, but what kind of specific questions did they have and um, what were they coming to you Well, with? most artists that came to me in the beginning were people that um, didn't even think about selling their art. It was more people that did art, but it was also fashion designers or um, musicians and it was mostly my friends here in Berlin where I lived for 10 years. They, like I said, like they saw that I've started 
doing this stuff online and they were curious about it. So they asked me like, how does it work with the website and how do you get people to your site and do people really buy online? And this was like back in 2007, 2008. So nowadays it's much more common that artists are online, but back then there weren't many. So yeah, so I helped them. I helped my one friend um, who's a fashion designer set up her first website and she's doing really well now. Um, yeah, and that's really how I got started because I'm an artist myself. I had so many artist friends and I really wanted to help them get out of their nine to five jobs. So is it like you're sitting at a cafe talking with their friends and like, hey, what's up, Jamila? What, do you, what, do you, what, what are you working on right now? And you tell them, oh, you know, I'm building this website. I'm starting to get these people that are coming to me and, and they're finding my website. And then the artist is like, whoa, stop. You've got a website and people are coming to you without you having to go and contact them. Could you do that for me? Is that as easy as it was? Kind of, yeah, exactly. I mean, in the beginning, I didn't take money for it. I just like told them what I knew and I told them how I did it. And so they started implementing that stuff for themselves. Totally makes sense. Let's go into how you actually work with the artists and what you do with them. We talked about this a little bit before the show started. And I think it's really interesting and crucial and that you have what I would consider the quote unquote, right approach, because you don't just want to start by making a website. You could do that. Um, and it's not necessarily bad if you do that. I think it's bad if you do yeah. nothing. It's important to keep taking steps forward. But you have a process that you take people through that I think is, uh, you know, it really does set people up for success. And so could you talk a little bit? Well, not a little bit. Talk as much as you want. I want to know all about this. And I want the people listening to know all about this, that they, you know, they could get eventually reach out to you or if even just hearing it they might be able to create their own like cobble together their own kind of plan so i actually start with mindset so because uh, most artists like you said when they hear the word business they kind of like sh uh, shiver from that but um the most important thing to know as an artist is that you don't have to be a business person per se what you have to do is um use your own uh, main talent that you have, your creativity, and use that to build a business around your art, around your talents and gifts, so you can make money with it. That's where you start. You make that mind shift. You concentrate on the, on your creativity. Um, I have this little exercise that I do with people. Um, I have them sit down and close their eyes and then think about um their creative process, like what it's like when they are in the flow, when they, um, when inspiration guides them, like as if inspiration would take their hand and um, and guide their brush um, across the panel. When they are in this moment, then I tell them to um, take note if they see a certain color or if they feel it in a uh, certain part of their body or if they even. Um, have a name or a face or maybe uh, see an object or an animal and then take note of that and really write it down and then um, every day for maybe three times a day sit down and remember this like um, let creativity come back to them and then connect this creativity to their um, sense of business so basically sit down again close your eyes again think about business and how far you've come or how far you haven't come and usually then anxiety comes up and um because they think marketing is icky or um they don't know what to do next or overwhelm and then i tell them to ask this spirit of creativity um to help them with that business so basically to think about business like a piece of art it's not different we say building a business but you can also say create a business it is like creating a piece of art it's the same creative process so that's the first step and then i ask them to um, think about what they really want um, from their life where do they want to be in five years and um, not think about what anyone else wants for them but just for themselves like do they want to live in a house on the beach or do they want to live in a city do they want a family do they want to live with friends um do they want to travel do they just want to be by themselves in a small little tiny house in the country whatever it is um picture that 
write it down, journal about it, and then figure out like how much money do you need to um, live this lifestyle. And that's your financial goal. I never thought, well, I had thought about business as being a creative thing and something that you're constantly adding and evolving, but I had never thought of it as a piece of art. So I think that's that's a profound, uh, profoundly different way to think about it. And I think it's a really empowering way to think about business, especially for you know that 17-year-old version of myself that would just run away from anything business and say like, no, this is, this is no different than writing a piece of music, except it's... It's a different yeah. medium. Yeah. Um, then the second thing is, I'm. I want to ask a question about so the people, the artists that you've worked with, and when you get them to go through this exercise where they're going five years down the line, are they? Have they usually thought this way, or is this a new process? And if it is a new process for them, have you heard some real aha moments where people were just like, "Oh man, I, you know, I never thought of it like." This I never thought that I could do something like this in five years. Um, now I can think of something, especially without having the constraints or feeling like I need to appease somebody else. That if it's just for myself in five years, I want to do this, and this is so empowering. Yes, absolutely. Um, most people don't think about this stuff. They just uh, live their lives and they try to um, uh, make enough money to get by and. Um, so they just basically live from day to day. I mean, artists do that a lot anyway. Um, so it is really empowering for them. And usually after a session like this, they feel really happy and like light. And they tell me like, oh, this is awesome. And I feel much better. And now I know where I want to go. And just this exercise by itself helps them and empowers them. Absolutely. You said you figure out what you where you want to be in five years, so you have a target, and then you work backwards to figure out how much money you need to live that that reality, that five year eventual reality. Exactly. What what's that number look like for the people that you've worked with? Is it a huge are people dreaming like really gigantic and saying like I need a hundred thousand dollars a month to live in this um, you know, Tony Stark mansion on the on a cliffside or actually most people start out really small. They'll say something like, I want I don't know, I just want to make enough so I can live, let's say three thousand um, euros or dollars or whatever their currency is. And I actually have to encourage them to dream bigger. I always, I start asking them, like, what kind of house do you want to live in? Like, stop being realistic. I want you to dream. Like, like I said, be creative. Like, um, let your creativity flow and see what you really want, not what you think is attain attainable or doable, just what you really want. And then they start um, coming up with bigger numbers but no one starts out at least I have never had any clients starting out with oh I want 100,000 a month or something <laughs> <laughs> they start off um, changing their mindset a little bit thinking about what a five-year reality looks like working back coming up with a monthly number and then what's the next step yeah, then we sit down and we look at what kind of products they're already selling um, what kind of I don't know, could be music or art or fashion or whatever it is. And then um, sit down and write down how much of which product they actually sell. And then they see that there's like a difference between where they want to be and where they are now. And then we start working to make this uh, goal more attainable. So what kind of products are you selling? Maybe they um, have to raise their prices or maybe they can repurpose their um, products. Let's say they're painters and they only sell um, um, originals. Then I tell them, no, maybe you want to sell prints or maybe you want to start selling postcards or um, maybe um, put your paintings on stuff for the bed or, or on plates or cups or whatever it is. And then we start thinking about that, what they like, um, what they don't like. And so we um, make this product line bigger. And um, we also start thinking about what other things they have that they like doing. Some of them like to do workshops and teach other people how to um, make art. Um, all these things, we come up with a big list of stuff. And then we look at what's um, realistic, what they really like doing, what could um, bring the most money. And so we create this product line that um, 
really can bring in the money that they want. Oh, that's fantastic. And I mean, I've thought of a lot of, of possibilities to do with art, but I've never gone to plates and cups. That's uh, dinnerware. I think that's a a great one. I, I would have no idea how to even get started with that. But I'm sure it's not that difficult. Somebody's done it. The information's out there. Absolutely. There's actually websites where you can go and test it out. It's like these, um, what do you call it, um, print-on-demand sites. That For plates? Like wow. Yes. All right. Man, you <laughs> learn something new every, every day. That's why I love doing this <laughs> podcast because just by talking to other people, you just like vastly expand what you know. That it was a fair gamble. Either I'd find myself or get it out of my system. Okay, so I'm going to play devil's advocate here. So we created a big vision. Uh, you've given me ideas for um, creating lines, but somehow I feel like it's just not possible. Like, I'm just not good enough. Uh, nobody's going to buy this stuff. You know, I, I sell a few pieces here and there, but this just sounds like it's all too much and it's all too much work. What would you say to somebody, somebody who's a little bit stubborn like that? Well, there's people... Um that say, or that are afraid that their art is not good enough. Um, what I tell them is usually, uh, well, there's 7 billion people on the planet. I'm pretty sure there's enough people that like your art. Um, that usually is enough to, then they go like, oh, yeah, well, that's true. I mean, so many people. <laughs> um, and what was the other question? I, I don't know what your, I can't say what your process is, but if somebody comes to you with a lot of resistance, because I'm sure it must happen, how do you help them get past that? Well, that's, again, uh, basically a mindset thing. Um, and it's, uh, like you said, mainly overwhelm. So um, I sit down with them and break this big plan that we just created down into like really small steps. And what I also do is I have them um, use Trello to... Um, um, create their to-do lists and then I um, have this system that I use in Trello and that, uh, that I teach them as well so I have um, one column for the whole year where the big product projects go and then I have one for the month so I take one um, big project and break it down into monthly projects and then I have one for the week and one for the day so you have these big projects on the right and then you make them smaller and smaller and smaller until you come to today. And then it's just like a little thing that you can do today, like um, uh, figure out the next seven social media status updates that you want to post. And then when they have like these small steps in front of them that, they, that are really attainable and easy, that's where the overwhelm stops. Oh, I love it. And for those listening that don't know what Trello is, or I'm not sure if it's Trello or Treo, but it's a website, T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. It's like to-do lists, but it's a little bit different. You'll have to check it out for yourself to see what I mean, but it's really effective, and a lot of people are using it as a great organizational tool for things that you have to do. Uh, can you give us an example of tasks that you would give to somebody? I know like for myself, I try and do this, and I always overestimate what I can get done in a day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, I don't give them the um, tasks. It's more like we create them together. So let's say they want to put their art on a plate. Um, that's the big goal. Like, I want to have my art on plates and cups. So that goes in the, I don't know, uh, the yearly um, trial list. And then uh, we work break it down to, let's say, what are you, what can you do today? Go to that website where you can do it. Um, look at um, how it's set up. That's all for today. And then tomorrow, maybe um, sign up for that website. Upload your first design. So, yeah, just breaking it down into really, really simple steps that you can do and that are easy to do. I tell people, do like at least work on your business at least... 10 minutes a day. Sure, it's better to do half an hour, an hour, but you don't have to do it all day long. Um, just do one little step every day and you'll get there eventually. Oh, totally. What do you think is possible? Let's say for myself, I do very graphic style. So let's say three to four colors, hard outlines on things. I feel like for me, I'm going through my own resistance here live on the, on this podcast is that so, like, could I put that on plates? Would people buy that? I, you know, I'm, I'm just not, I'm still not sure myself. Maybe plates is not the best for this style. I'm not sure. I would have to see it. 
But um, yeah, there's all kinds of other things that you can do. I think, um, um, for example, prints would do really good with this kind of style. Or um, maybe, like I said, stuff like cello cases where something that's bigger where you can see it better. Or maybe even on bed linens. I think that would go really well bed linens wow okay so you're just uh, blowing my mind here with (laughs) the possibilities because you know i thought of there's art you know it's it's on everything around us but what let's say somebody let's say someone's a a comic book artist what do you think is possible for somebody like that that does comic books um if they let's say you could take them all the way like to a hundred miles an hour with with doing like a lot of products and they're really eating it up. What is what would you envision that reality looking like? Well, I think um, it's not really about having thirty different um, products. It's more about finding out which ones work the best for you. So I wouldn't even recommend to have that many. Let's say more like ten or maybe even just like three, and then um, to find out what works best and then you systemize it and then um, you start selling more and more because you have systems set up and then you can uh, really, really take advantage of the product funnel that you, that you built and uh, make basically as much money as you want. And that looks different for everyone. And so, like you said, some people want 100000 a month. Um, others want 3000 a month. So it's really about you, what your goals are. It's all attainable, definitely. I love it. I I'm like have this giant smile on my face because I can feel that my own mind of what's possible has just been expanded. <laughs> yeah, this has been great. So who's the ideal person for you, not just for a coach, because I think any serious artist could use a coach, but for you specifically, who's the best type of person? Well, I love working with people that are really motivated, that know that, know that they want to really get somewhere. They might not know how to get there, but they are motivated to do it. And um, people that I can inspire and then they take the ideas and run with them. Um, sure, I'll help you Go, go the way step by step and I'll help you um, break it down into small steps and all this stuff. But I really love it when people um, have fire and, and really want something and really go for it. Do you find you work better with males, females, traditional artists, digital artists, uh, young, old, uh, part-time work, full-time? Like, does, do any, does any of this matter or is it just like come to me with motivation and everything will be fine? Yes, basically. I don't mind. You can be male, you can be 70, you can be 15 for all I know. As long as you're passionate about what you do, about your art, and that you really want to take it to the next level, and that also that you know that your art is really important to the world, that it is a gift that you have, that you want to bring to the world, and that everyone really needs it, then um, you're my kind of person. (laughs) Okay, that's perfect. Uh, where can people find out more about you and what's the best way to get in touch? Well, they can find me at creativewebbiz.com and you can contact me there or on Twitter or on um, Google+, Plus. but my name is a little bit hard to spell, so um, I think the best way is uh, through my website. And So let's just spell that out for people. So it's C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E W-E-B B-I-Z, yeah. Z-Z, depending on where you're listening from, dot com. So, <laughs> perfect. And if you go to pencilkings.com slash podcast, then you can get a list of all the episodes. Um, Jamila's name, as I you know, had trouble with it earlier, it's, it's a little bit difficult to spell. So, easiest way is just to go to slash podcast, and then you can see this episode uh, with the show notes, um, the links that we mentioned, and... Uh, all the other goodies that we have on pencilkings.com. So thank you so much for being on this call. I'm fired up. And oh, let's tell people actually, you know, just really quickly about the the new program that you have going. Just give me like a one minute overview of what that's all about. And then we'll wrap this up. Sure. 
So I have this uh, course coming out. It's called The Art of Selling Art Online. Again, it's about like first this mindset shift that uh, you can use your creativity to create a business. And it's a 30-day um, course. You will get um, one lesson a day and one little task a day that you can easily do within half an hour. And we will um, basically cover, um, uh, we will set up a, a business plan so so you can um, get rid of over overwhelm. And then we will create a, a simple marketing plan that's not, icky or salesy or anything and it works with your talents in the third week we will um, talk about product lines and what kind of products you can sell and in week four we will get to the website and uh, make simple um, tweaks to your website so it's better so that to sell basically yeah, and that's the art of selling at online. Awesome. I took a look at it and it looks like an amazing course for anybody that's looking to get started. So thank you so much, Jamila, for being on the call. And um, I will see you guys, you guys listeners, uh, next Wednesday for the next episode of the Pencil Kings podcast. Take care. Bye. That's it for another episode of the Pencil Kings podcast. If you'd like to check us out and see more about what we do, head on over to PencilKings.com. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, we're everywhere. And, well, that's it. See you guys soon.